Hi there, this is Christina Crawford with ExtinaStamps.com. Are you ready for the project of the week? I hope you like this one. It's a lot of fun. So let's get started. I am going to show you a really beautiful card that inspired me to show you um, this technique of using the scallop tack topper punch as a belly band for the card. This card was made by Christina McQuaid in my team and I had her demonstrate this at one of our meetings and it was just a big hit. Um, she's so creative and sometimes we, we start with an idea that somebody else gives us and we just run with it. And So hopefully you can run with this idea. What I'm doing is taking a piece of the Calypso Coral cardstock. And as you can see, it's pretty long, but it is a half sheet of cardstock. It is cut down lengthwise. So it is 11 inches by four and a quarter. When you fold the cardstock that is such good quality, like the Stampin' Up! cardstock, um, you know, if you tried to fold that with your finger, it would crunch up because it's 80 pounds. It's, it's very good quality. So use a bone folder to give it a nice crease. That's the base of the card. Next, I'll be using some of the Fun Designer Series paper. It is the Calypso Coral, and this is going to match right on top. But I do have a piece of Whisper White cardstock that I'm going to layer on top just to bring the white out. So it's not so much tone on tone. It's going to really just pop that right out. So let me use this nail adhesive here just to give it about an inch on each side. That's all you really need. This stuff is super sticky and then watch your borders before you pop it push it down and um, that'll be layer one right there so that piece of whisper white cardstock is four inches by five and a quarter inches the piece of designer series paper is going to be a quarter of an inch shorter than that so it is three and three quarters of an inch by five inches you always want to do the same if you're going to cut a quarter of an inch this way, cut a quarter of an inch that way as well. Um, sometimes the designer series paper is so beautiful on both sides. I know people have a hard time deciding which side to use, um, but today we are going to use the matching Calypso Coral, and there's the layer. I mean, this is just so beautiful. Stampin' Up! does a lot of the matching for us. I, I love how the Calypso Coral cardstock matches the Calypso Coral designer paper. And of course, there's an ink pad to match that, and there's ribbon to match it as well. So um, here's the, the ink pad. And the color scheme we're using today is the basic gray and the Calypso Coral ink. Uh, so let me show you first how to do the belly band, and then we're going to embellish the belly band. So here is a piece of the basic gray cardstock. It is a little bit shorter than two inches and it is eight and a half inches long. So what you would really like to do is get a nice paper cutter like this one Stampin' Up! offers. And just uh, you can see how detailed those numbers go. And you see that little like one sixteenth of an inch. So you could use that or I actually went in just a wee bit more right up to that too. And then I cut my cardstock and that's how I knew it was going to be a little bit shorter than that two inches. Um, you can see here, this is just a tip on the side. I took a Sharpie and I put score and cut. And oftentimes when I have my clubs, my classes, and I have other stampers using it, sometimes we forget which one is which. And you'd really hate to cut something that you need to score. And so this way it just reminds us which is which. So I cut that strip down and the reason why I have it at two little smaller than two inches is because the scallop tag topper punch has a little grooved place where your cardstock will go. And if it's exactly two inches, it might buckle up. It's not going to fit. So this is just a tad smaller. And I'm going to feed that all the way up and just punch it down and flip it over and do it again on the other side. And so this is what the image looks like. It makes great bookmarkers if you wanted to make some bookmarkers or embellishment for your cards as well. Um, now you're going to take that paper cutter and that score out once more. Um, you do need to use that scoring blade. I'm going to bring that right up almost to that one inch line and then score it. And it gives you a nice groove and it's going to fold very nicely again without crinkling that up. And let me just put that aside for a moment and um, 
show you what that looks like. <laughs> Um, so you could see that uh, that's going to be the edge that holds the side of the card. Um, now, because you have that part measured and you know that's going to be enough, I have my stylus and, and this is how I'm going to score this piece. And then I'm just going to flip that right over. And that is how you create the width to wrap perfectly around your card for the belly band. If you have it too tight, it's not going to slide off nicely, but this is, this is perfect if you do it that way. So you see that there's two holes here and that's where the ribbon is going to thread around. I'll show you how to do that in a moment, but let's embellish the belly band. The stamp set I am using today is Oh My Goodies. And it is item 134087 for the wood mount. When there's a stamp set that Stampin' Up! has the framelits to pop those right out, and then I like to use the wood because it doesn't matter if you're crooked and how you stamp, but you're going to cut it out perfectly. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But this is a fun stamp set, and so I am using a great big, big thanks for being you. I'll move that aside. It also comes in clear if you prefer. Um, you know how we are as stampers, that we're always having scrap paper left over. Well, it's good to throw them in a baggie, these pieces. You know, just such a shame to waste them because this is perfect for a project like this where you just need a little bit of a piece um, you know, so often I know people throw that out, but this, this is going to create a lot of projects and a lot of embellishments, and it's going to save money. I am using the Basic Gray ink pad, inking up my stamp, and stamping straight down. And next, I am going to use that same stamp, but with a different color, the Calypso Coral. And so now I really have to clean that, don't I? Because if I stamp right on that Calypso Coral, I'm going to get a very funky shade. So this is my Stampin' Scrub. It's a little bit wet from a stamping mist right here. It's going to clean that and dry it on this side. I'm going to stamp it a couple times just to make sure I got that clean before I put it on my Calypso Coral. And here we go. When you push down a little too hard and rock it, you'll get that edge over there. And of course, because I'm sitting, I like to stand when I stamp, but for this video, I'm sitting down, so I, I don't know my strength. And that happens. Um, fortunately, I'm gonna cut that out. I don't have to stamp it over again. Um, but when that happens, then you just know that you don't need to be rocking your stamp so much. Clean that up and put that away. Next, I'm gonna bring the Big Shot out and show you how to cut that out perfectly. This is the Stampin' Up! Big Shot. I love this machine. It is so much fun. When I first got it, it really re-inspired me in my paper crafting hobby. Uh, you can cut things, images out with the framelits, you can add texture, you can make bows and boxes. Just love this machine. Also, because I call it a machine, my husband likes it too. He does. So what does this come with? Well, the machine comes with two cutting boards and mine are very well loved, but it's good for me to show you this because you can see I probably used it a thousand times and I can still keep on using it. Um, this one is a little bit younger. It's beveled at the edges so I can use them together. And because I'm using the metal framelits, Stampin' Up! provides a magnetic platform board that you can buy separately and it always shows you like this is how you build your sandwich. I love it. So you've got your magnetic platform. I'm going to put one of the acrylic mats down and we are working with that a great big thanks for being you. I'm laying that right down. Because it's magnetic, when you take your metal framelits, as you can see, I used some business card, let me show you. These are just business card magnets, sticky magnets, and I lined them up so my framelits just stay nicely put. Um, I keep them in the envelopes that they come in and it helps them stay all together. I put them on the outside of the envelope so I can see them. Um, when they do come in, they're sandwiched inside, so I refolded them so I could still see the information, but I've got my framelits on this side. This is the um, Deco Labels collection, and so the smallest one fits that perfectly. And you can feel that magnet just pull down, it's going to hold that into place. Um, if you don't have the magnetic platform, something else that you can do is get post-it note and just kind of lay it down and use it with the platform that comes with the Big Shot. 
but the magnetic platform is really is really worth getting. So there's my sandwich. I'm going to put another acrylic mat on the top and just crank that through. Use your hand to pull it down. You're going to hear it snap, crackle, and pop, and that is normal. You are not breaking the machine. And when you remove that, let me just pick this up a little bit and just slide it over. Um, you just pop that right out and cut it and trimmed it perfectly with that image. Um, just a little tip, it's really easy to throw that away, so you really want to be careful with that and make sure that you pop it out and only throw that little piece of scrap that's left until you save your framelit and not throw that away. And that is how to use the Big Shot and the framelits to pop out a perfect image. And so by using those Deco Labels collection framelits, I was able to use that smallest one and turn a stamped image from this to this. There was, there's no way my cutting skills would ever get to be that perfect, so I love the Big Shot and the framelits for that reason. So I am going to be working on the belly band embellishing that, so let me show you the finished project and I'll show you the steps to get there. Here is the finished card. I love this card, I love the colors together, I do. Um, two colors here plus the Whisper White, and sometimes if you add in a third color, like it just makes it a little bit more interesting, but I love the basics with this. And so the belly band is right here, and I'll be using some of the white satin ribbon. And sometimes when I'm having classes and I do my team meetings, um, you know, everyone says, oh, I think I need about this much ribbon. Um, but truthfully, the best way to do it is before you cut it, thread it through. Fold it down, and you know how much you need in order to, to tie a bow or to tie a knot. And then once you measure it that way, you can take your, well we call these the ribbon scissors because they're fabulous with ribbon, and you can just cut that right there. And that's how much you know. If you cut it too short, you'd be wasting ribbon because you might not be able to work with it. Um, so I'm going to just turn this around and tie a knot because today I am not making bows too well, but it is a very good knot day. And so I have that. Kind of work with it a little bit. The ribbon is high quality. It has like a stiffness to it so you can play around. There's no wire in it, but it does feel like there's some wire, wire ribbon um, flexibility in there. There's my cute little knot that looks like a bow. Um, now this never has to be untied because this is the, be the belly band and so it slides on and off of your card. You can take that card out, open that up and read a plant in the side. Um, they're gonna be like, oh, that card is so beautiful and they can go ahead and just put the belly band back on that as well and slide it up and down with it. And it's paper so it's very flexible. You could work with it a little bit if it's too stiff. Here's the extra room. Here is my thanks. And taking the snail, I'm just going to do a couple inches. Stick that right there on the side. It's flat. And what am I going to do with this piece? Well, I have my paper snips, and I'm going to cut that out. I'm not worrying about the lines here. I actually don't want any of that calypso coral to show on the top and the bottom of the thing, so I'm working on the inside of that line. And then I, I want to keep those little parentheses right on the side. I think that they look kind of funky. I want to keep that together. And then using the dimensionals, I'm going to give that a little bit of a lift. So these are dimensionals. They are double sticky honeycomb shape puppets. And they will pop up anything you like. Um, if you want to double these up, of course you can. You just stick another one on top and it gives it an extra lift. And I'm replacing the gray with the clips of coral. It gives it a little dimension. And so that is how I got the belly band on the card. Isn't that awesome? I love that. So once again, it's using the scallop tack topper punch. And the stamp set I'm using is Oh My Goodies. And I will show you another card with Oh My Goodies and here it is. This is happy umpteenth birthday with the emphasis on the umpteenth. I hope that whoever I send this to has a good sense of humor. If you want to take a look at this idea, you're going to notice that something different. I have the designer paper right on the Blackberry Bliss. 
there isn't an extra piece of white underneath it. So it creates a bigger border because there's no extra dimension underneath that. And then I used the baked brown sugar twine. Uh, and this one was just so funky and, and fun to work with as well. So, I mean, here it is, the same stamp set, oh my goodies. Um, just having fun with the different colors and the different ways you can tie with the ribbon and with the twine and using the dimensional. And then once again, here's Christina's card um, with this great stamp set that was only available during celebration. We have to get those while they're hot. So what do you think about that belly band using the scallop tack topper? I think it's pretty cool and you could use it in so many different ways. Um, and so these two designer series paper are actually from the same set called Park Lane. Just love it. You know, the colors coordinate inside there. So I'm going to show you that I made some envelope liners using the envelope framelits. Um, the largest one will fit inside of the Stampin' Up's medium envelopes and slide right in. You know what's so funny? My mom says that it's an envelope unless it has money in it and then it's an envelope. <laughs> so uh, let me just fold that in there. You want to fold it first and give that a crease and only put tape on the top. Fold that back in. This way it doesn't crunch when you open that back up. And so you can do this either way. You can keep this together, which is pretty fun. You can go ahead and use these two together because they're the same colors. And you can put this one with this. You can just have fun while you're working with your designer paper and you're keeping true with the same color scheme. And so that is the project of the week. I hope that you liked it and that you give it a try. And have a wonderful day. Thanks.